Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 441 of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, uh, second edition. Um, if, you, if I go too fast, you can always rewind. If you like what I'm doing, be sure to like and share. If you have any questions, you can do a video response in the comments below. I'm going to go quick on this. There's a lot to cover. So the susceptibility is chi E, the permittivity is epsilon, and the dielectric is dielectric constant is K. And this only stands for linear con, uh, linear dielectrics. If you stick a linear dielectric into an electric field, the electric field is going to polarize that linear dielectric, which is going to create a new field, which is going to polarize the linear dielectric again. And you're going to reach some kind of point of equilibrium where the polarization is equal to epsilon naught uh, times the susceptibility chi e of the electric field. This is not the initial electric field it was placed into, but the electric field you get after this feedback loop has been completed. Chi E is susceptibility. It has no units, dimensionless. Um, it depends on the makeup of the material you're dealing with. A um, couple of notes. Uh, linear dielectrics. Let me write that out. This is important. I have this rule for it, but other kinds of dielectrics don't. And another uh, little thought is if you cr if you increase E too much, you're going to ionize the material dealing with, and so this only holds for a range of uh, electric fields. Okay. Um, if you use D, so D is equal to epsilon naught E vector plus the polarization. Well, we just calculated that up there. That's epsilon naught E vector plus epsilon naught the susceptibility times the E vector, which is the same for the polarization. So we get basically epsilon naught times one plus the susceptibility of the electric field, the resulting electric field. So this is a good relation to know. Uh, we have a shorthand for that. We just use the uh, permittivity of the uh, material, which is equal to epsilon naught times one plus the um, susceptibility. So this is the permittivity. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. Um, if you lived in um, before Einstein's time, you would have thought that space was made of junk, uh, some kind of ether that actually had a permittivity, just like any other material. It just happened to have a, uh, a lower permittivity than anything else. But uh, nowadays we know that's nonsense, thanks to the experiments that have been performed since then. Um, K is another interesting uh, value. K is the dielectric constant, which is just equal to 1 plus the susceptibility, or if you want to look at it a different way, K is epsilon, the permittivity over the permittivity of free space. Okay, and this kind of brings them all together into neat little equations that you can remember. Remember, we're talking about linear dielectrics. This doesn't apply to other kinds of materials. Okay, so we've covered all three constants. We've related D to E. Um, what about the free charge? How does the free charge uh, that gave us D relate to the bound charge? Well, we have the bound charge is equal to the divergence. I did this wrong. Negative the divergence of the polarization. We plug in the polarization using this here equal to that. Well, let's take this. Let's take E, and let's uh, multiply that times P over epsilon naught chi E, um, where epsilon over epsilon naught is just K, which is one plus which is one um, plus um, chi E. So we get this is equal to negative the divergence of chi E over one plus chi E times the D field. Okay. Well, the divergence of the D field is the free charge. So now we have this beautiful relationship between the bound charge and the free charge. So wherever you have free charge inside of a dielectric, now you can calculate how much bound charge accumulates at that point. Um, here's a simple example. Oh, the surface charge, of course, uh, can be calculated using more traditional techniques. The issue is, is as you get closer and closer to the surface, the susceptibility changes. Um, so you can't quite use these equations to calculate the surface charge in such a simple matter. But as we'll see in example five, that's not going to be an issue. So example five, you have um, 
a conducting sphere of radius A surrounded by a dielectric of permittivity epsilon. So this is A, this is B, and this is epsilon. Okay, and we want to find the potential at the center of the sphere. So let's calculate the electric field inside the conductor. That was easy. Let's calculate the electric field outside of space. Electric field outside is just going to use Gauss's law. So we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Um, and the total charge enclosed and, and divided by the surface area in the r hat direction. OK? Um, yeah, so it's uh, 1 over epsilon times the total charge, which is q over 4 pi r squared. Um, OK, and then we have uh, to calculate the stuff on the inside. We can't calculate d directly, but we can not We can calculate d. We can't calculate e, but we can calculate d in between using 1 over 4 pi q over r squared in the r hat direction. Now, because this is a linear, um, a linear dielectric, we can apply that d is equal to epsilon e. So we have e vector in the middle. This is out. This is in. This is middle is uh, 1 over epsilon q over r squared in the r hat direction. Okay, So now we know the electric field everywhere. Calculating the potential is going to be easy. So we want to calculate the potential at the center. So we start at infinity and we go to 0 of the electric field dot dl. I lied to you, the negative electric field. So the first step is we go from infinity to b using this outside electric field. Um, Q over R squared R hat dot DL vector. And then we add the second part, which goes from B to A using this electric field, negative 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Q, oh, I'm sorry, epsilon, not epsilon naught. Q over R squared R hat dot DL vector. And then finally we add the third part, which is from A to the center, which is this electric field of 0. Okay, so r dot dl, we're going to march towards in the r direction, so that's always going to be equal to 1 there. So we end up with the integral, uh, this is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r, evaluated between infinity and b, plus 1 over 4 pi epsilon q over r, evaluated between a, b, and a. And so we get 1, let's pull out the q's, q over 4 pi. And then this one is going to be epsilon v minus 0 uh, plus 1 over epsilon a. I'm sorry, epsilon not b minus 1 over epsilon b. And there we go. There is our potential. OK, notice that we didn't have to calculate the, permit, the uh, polarization uh, or the surface charge or anything like that, which makes um, Linear dielectrics particularly nice to work with. But let's suppose that we did want to calculate that just for kicks. So the way we would do that is we would say that the polarization is equal to epsilon naught chi e, uh, the electric field, and we're talking about in the middle there. So that was equal to epsilon naught chi e over 4 pi epsilon um, uh, q over r squared in the r hat direction. Okay, and obviously the divergence of this is going to be zero, so there's no bound charge in between there. But there is a surface charge, which is equal to the polarization dot the n hat. The n hat is pointing in the r direction, of course. For the outside part, the two are going to align, so we're going to get positive epsilon naught chi e over 4 pi epsilon q over b squared. And for the inside, we're going to get negative epsilon naught chi e 4 pi epsilon q over a squared. OK? So we get that surface charge. This is a lot like what you would expect if you had a conductor on the outside, except for the charge it accumulates is not so much. It doesn't quite cancel out the electric field in the middle, in between. It's a little less. Um, so some people think of, of dielectrics as, as uh, basically weak conductors but you know to me that that doesn't really tell the whole story you really have to think about how 
uh, all the little tiny dipole moments are aligning, you're getting a polarization that creates like an electric field that doesn't exactly cancel the electric field from the outside. Um, question, does D and P have a cross of zero in linear dielectrics? And the answer is no, and I'll show you why. So let's pretend we have some material like this where it's polarized and we walk around in a circle like this. And so the integral across that closed loop of p vector dot dl vector is not going to be zero because over here the polarization is zero in free space, but over here it isn't. Okay, so there's some kind of curl happening here. The uh, reason why we know that is because that's the same as the surface integral of the curl of p uh, dot da vector. And so this curl must be non zero. Okay, however, if everything is a dielectric, if everything you're thinking about is dielectric, well, everything that has an electric field or any possible chance of having a polarization is a dielectric, then you can use uh, the simple rule that in that case, the curl of D is zero, the curl of P is zero. This is only when, when it's everywhere, okay? In which case, your D vector is going to equal what you would get if there were no dielectric. You had a vacuum, so it's mean epsilon that of the E vector that you'd get. It's also going to be equal to the epsilon of what you actually do get. Okay, and so you can calculate that the, eps the, the electric field that you do get is the same as epsilon naught over epsilon of the electric field you'd get if there were no dielectric at all. Well, this is just one over k. Um, this is a really useful result. I'm gonna show you an example six here, why this is so useful. Okay, but this only applies again with everywhere there's a dielectric or everywhere that matters. Okay, so let's draw a capacitor, example six. So we have two plates. Um, and we put some kind of uh, dielectric with constant K in the middle. And the question is, how does the capacitance change versus not having any capacitance, not, not any, having not any dielectric at all? Well, originally you'd have the capacitance in the vacuum would just be the charge over the potential you get in the vacuum. Okay, holding the charge constant, the new capacitance is going to be what we get when we keep the same charge, but now we have a new potential between the two. Well, how does the old potential and the new potential relate? Well, we know the, the electric field of the new is just one over K of the electric field of the old, or the vacuum, okay? Well, the potential is negative integral E dot DL from two points. We're just multiplying a factor of one over K here. So the potential new is one over K, the potential in a vacuum, okay? So C nu is equal to Q over, well, K, KQ over what you would get in a vacuum, which is just K times the, the capacitance you get inside the vacuum. So that's, knowing that fact made this kind of problem just absolutely trivial to solve. Um, last little note. Okay, what happens if you don't have quite a linear dielectric, but you have some kind of crystal where in one direction it behaves like a linear dielectric, and in another direction it behaves like a different kind of linear dielectric? Well, in that case, and this typically rises in crystals, you're gonna have something where the polarization is equal to epsilon naught times some matrix of nine components, Z, Z, X, Z, Z, X, times the electric field. And this, um, this nine component thing is called the susceptibility tensor. Okay, so you get some pretty interesting results there when you think about how crystals might actually behave in an electric field. And of course the same rule applies. If you put too much electric field through, you're going to ionize something and then you have a conductor on your hands. Anyway, uh, I know we covered a lot of topics very quickly. Um, I hope you go back and review this and you memorize the susceptibility, the permittivity, and the um, dielectric constant, how they relate to each other. And you see that you remember that this only applies in linear dielectrics, and that last section I was talking about only applies when the linear dielectric is, is constant everywhere. Hope you have a good time. Take care and bye.